Hey, want to know the secret to getting started with scales on the guitar? Well, it's going to be position, which is really the position of your hand on the fretboard. Let me show you what I mean. So in guitar playing, position really means assigning our fingers to certain frets. And to do this, one of the first things we'll have to do is number our fingers. One, two, three, and four. From there, we just have to pick what fret we want to start at with our first finger. In this case, I'm going to choose the third fret because on most guitars, it's going to be the first inlay. I would call this third position since I'm anchoring my first finger on the third fret. And from there, I just assign my next three fingers to the next three frets. My second finger on the fourth fret, my third finger on the fifth fret, and my fourth finger on the sixth fret. So being in this position means that I have assigned those fingers to those frets. They're not going to move up and down or play any other frets, but they will play every string at that fret. This means any note that happens at the third fret, no matter what string it's on, is going to be played by my first finger. Likewise, any note that's played on the fifth fret, no matter what string it's on, is going to be played by my third finger. So for now anyway, I won't be moving up and down the neck. Those fingers are assigned to those frets, and they don't move. They only move up and down the strings. I think this will make more sense once we look at our first scale shape, so let's have a look at the minor pentatonic scale. This scale sometimes goes by different names, but it's really the first scale that all guitars should learn. And if you're used to looking at chord diagrams, it should look a little bit familiar, but there are a few important differences. The first being that unlike chords, scales are just played one note at a time instead of all of them at the same time. The second being that scale shapes like this are movable. Since they don't use any open strings, we can play them at any fret or in whatever position we want. We won't worry yet about what note we're starting on or what key we're in, the main thing now is just to get the shape under your fingers. And that's where being able to lock your hand into position really comes in handy. You'll notice that this scale shape only spans four frets. That means once we've assigned our fingers to the frets and we're in position, we don't have to worry about what notes we're playing or even what frets we're playing. All we have to think about is the finger combination going across each string. So I start down on the low E string at the third fret with my first finger. And then I know that the next note is under my fourth finger. And it happens to be at the 6th fret, but all I really have to think about for now is I'm on the low E string, and I've got my 1st finger, and then my 4th finger. That's the shape on that string. Then I can go to the next string and do the same thing. I'm back to my 1st finger again, and then this time to my 3rd finger. And that's all I really got to think about, is the finger combination. 1 and 3. I go to the next string, and it's the same thing, just 1 and 3 again. And guess what? The next string is the same, just one and three. And then I'm back to one and four on the next string. And then one and four again on the high E. So you may have noticed this scale shape only uses two different finger combinations across all the strings to get the whole scale. Let me go through it one more time. Again, I'll count out just the finger combination, starting down on the low E string, third fret, first finger. One and four, and then one and three, one and three again, one and three one more time, and then one and four, and one and four again. So this scale shape is particularly simple, but we're going to be able to use this approach to figure out all sorts of different scales. But for now, let's just play this one going back down, which means we've got to reverse the whole thing. So as we go back across the strings, we've got to play the upper note and then the lower note. Again, we can just use the finger combination. So starting up on the high E string, up at the sixth fret with my fourth finger, I go back to my first finger, and then four one, again on the next string, and then three one on the next couple of strings, and then 4-1 on the low E string. Now, when you're focusing on this finger combination, it might be tempting to focus on E string one at a time and sound something like this. But you want to be able to play the scale all the way up and all the way down, nice and steady, a little more like this.
a good way to practice it to give your left hand a little bit more space and keep your right hand nice and steady is to actually hit each note twice, kind of like this. You might not go that fast at first, and if anything, you want to start slow, but steadiness is the most important thing, so playing with a metronome might be handy as well. So get your hand in position and give this scale a try. Next time around, we'll look at the major pentatonic, but make sure you get this one under your fingers first. Don't be afraid to try it at other frets as well. If you want to have some fun, try playing with the backing track. And as always, happy practicing.